Whenever a Splatoon netcode complaint happens, there's bound to be someone in stream chat or comment sections or wherever else blaming Nintendo's servers. Nintendo, fix your servers, they'll say. Here's the thing. Splatoon has servers that are used for matchmaking, but it doesn't use servers for in-game play. The lag you're experiencing when you're trying to track an enemy player isn't caused by a malfunctioning server. There isn't a server handling it at all. Some of y'all are already confused about what this means, so let's explain it for just a second. I'm not super well-read on networking, but here's the basic information that I can pass on. If you want anything more in-depth, I'll recommend that you check out a blog post by data miner Oatmeal Dome called Splatoon 2's Netcode and Matchmaking, an in-depth look. While Splatoon 3's servers use a system called NPLN instead of the NEX system described in the article, as far as we know, the in-game systems are about the same as what Oatmeal Dome describes there. A server system is when you have machines owned by the game developer that players communicate with directly. So there's one version of the game on that machine that's correct, and your game only communicates with that machine, that server. Everyone else who's playing also communicates solely with this machine. So your inputs show up on their game screen because your machine told the server and then the server told them that that input happened. This system is why some games like, say, Fortnite, give you options for matchmaking region. When you choose NA East on Fortnite, there's a computer somewhere in Virginia that's getting data from all the players in your game and running the game sending data back to whatever machine you're running it on. The communication's between your machine and the server. It's just that one connection that matters, and since the server is going to be pretty powerful and well-connected, the only variable in your experience is usually your machine's connection to it. You choose the NA East server instead of the other ones because your computer is closer to that one in Virginia than it is to, say, the one in Brazil. And since data does still take a small amount of time to travel, even if it's very fast, the computer in Virginia will receive it from you sooner, and there will be less of a delay between when you press a button and when the server becomes aware you've pressed the button and adds that input to the game. Splatoon, on the other hand, runs on what's called a peer-to-peer -peer network. There are servers for Splatoon, but they're only in charge of getting players matched up. Once the game starts, your Switch has to communicate with another Switch console, whichever has been designated as the host, usually the Switch that entered the lobby first. That host Switch plays the role that a server would play in Fortnite, communicating with the other Switch consoles to keep them synced. This means that if you're the host, your Switch has access to information from the other consoles sooner than anyone else. In Salmon Run, for instance, the host of the lobby takes significantly less time, visibly so, to score golden eggs in the basket. And so high-level Salmon Run strategy involves setting up the lobby host in a position where they're scoring as many of the eggs as possible to speed that step of the process up. There are a lot of little effects of these design decisions that someone better versed in the computer science concepts would be a better teacher for. But the point I want to drive home is this. Splatoon doesn't have servers that impact your in-game experience. It's never had them. Angrily tweeting, Nintendo fix your servers at Nintendo of North America wouldn't help even if they had servers, because everyone's always tweeting at Nintendo and most of them have no idea what they're talking about. But it's even more amusingly impotent, because these servers that you're thinking of actually just aren't there. That's not to say that Nintendo deserves no criticism for the state of Splatoon's netcode. Peer-to-peer -peer network architecture is a very old system that most game developers stopped using more than a decade ago. Maybe something about the hardware limitations inherent in making the Switch as portable as it is plays a role here? But even if that's the case, and the trade-off is something that allows for portability, a feature a lot of people appreciate about the Switch, I think it is fair to say that Nintendo's priorities and design decisions are why they're relying on a system that many would call obsolete for one of their flagship multiplayer franchises. The thing is, now that the decision has been made, there's nothing to repair. There's nothing on the hardware side for Nintendo to fix, because problems in your game are caused by problems in another player's internet connection, and by decisions Nintendo has already made about how your Switch gets information from it. Only someone who knows both more about computer systems than I do, and 
has insider information about Nintendo as a business, probably at multiple different levels of management, could really do a good critical analysis of Nintendo's decisions that led to this system being implemented. Maybe, for what the Switch is capable of, this is the best available solution. And while it is important that consumers hold companies to a certain standard of quality, and that this netcode is definitely on the low end in terms of quality compared with competitors, making a fuss isn't necessarily impactful if at the end of the day we're all buying the game in Nintendo Switch Online and putting up with it anyway. There are all sorts of corners they cut all the time with their first-party flagship IPs that rub people the wrong way. But at the end of the day, all of these grievances don't stop fans from buying the games. No one else makes games like Nintendo does. There's no competition. They're in a league of their own for what they do. That means there will always be peculiarities we have to put up with in the way they do things. Are they behind the times? Are they just running on a business model that requires that these corners be cut, unlike their competitors? There's not enough transparency in the way the business runs for us to know. But the products so far have been good enough that we've bought them in spite of these flaws. I would like to hope Nintendo is imagining bigger possibilities for their experiences. Drastically improved netcode would be a huge selling point for Splatoon 4, and something that would massively help the image of the game in esports communities. I believe that esports communities have a lot of value in bringing people together and helping them learn about themselves, and therefore I care about the netcode of the Splatoon games. But also, esports as an industry has been massively overhyped and overinvested into, and the bubble is starting to pop even for juggernauts in the space like League of Legends. Maybe Nintendo is actually wise to be wary of investing too heavily in it themselves. I played Super Smash Bros. Melee competitively for a decade and a half, and I've developed a confusing mixture of empathy and admiration for Nintendo with frustration and anger about how this business has actively impeded the growth of so many things I've loved. They gave us Melee, but shut down Project M and Slippy, two things which I consider unambiguously good for the world that only serve to increase everyone's ability to enjoy what Nintendo already made. They've made some of the most beautiful music ever put in games, but then cracked down on people trying to make it something a person can listen to without having to open up the game on a console and play to the part where that music is programmed to start. Sources I've gotten close to that have had conversations with Nintendo behind NDAs tell me that the company understands a lot more than they let on about what's being asked of them by consumers, but that logistical concerns get in the way, and Nintendo's PR have to cushion the blow to consumers when the best possible solution doesn't meet their expectations. But when I've interacted directly, or heard of people I know interacting directly with the company, it's always felt like interacting with a bureaucratic quagmire, needing four levels of management to okay simple decisions, getting infuriatingly vague responses, stall tactics, even about critical aspects of the collaboration which have thousands of dollars of grassroots investment at stake. Those levels of management may go high up enough that they reach people who are completely out of touch with the very industry and sub-industry specific situations that they're trying to make decisions about. Maybe complaining about Splatoon's servers on Twitter is actually all we've been able to do all along, expressing dissatisfaction with how Nintendo has made us feel, even though we don't have the vocabulary or understand anything about why they made us feel that way. Maybe that's the best we've been able to do, given just how much is a trade secret and hidden behind NDAs. But I figure there has to at least be some value in knowing what you're complaining about just a little better than to complain that they need to fix their servers. So I hope we've at least gotten to the point where you understand why that, if nothing else, isn't a great way to communicate what upset you about this game.